International allies are calling on Turkey to stop its offensive in northern Syria, but the Turkish president insists that won't happen. This is day three of Turkey's incursion into Kurdish-controlled villages along the border region. The intense shelling has already forced about 100,000 civilians to flee. Casualties have been reported on both sides, but exact numbers are difficult to determine. There are also unconfirmed reports that some ISIS fighters have escaped from a Kurdish prison. U.S. officials are threatening sanctions against Turkey, but it was President Trump's troop withdrawal that allowed Turkey's offensive to proceed. So, what is Turkey's plan to address the instability in the region created by its incursion? Kerem Uras is Turkey's ambassador to Canada. He joins me now in studio. Hi, Ambassador. Pleasure to have you here. Thanks for coming in. Pleasure is mine. Thank you. I want to start off by asking your reaction to uh, the Canadian government's statement on the incursion into Syria. Canadian Foreign Affairs Minister Chrystia Freeland specifically says, and I want to read it, uh, she says she condemns, she says, Turkey's military incursion into Syria. She says the unilateral action risks undermining the stability of the region, exacerbating the humanitarian situation, and risks rolling back progress achieved by the global coalition against Daesh, of course of which your country is a member. Mm -hmm. Your response to that statement? Well, I understand her concerns, which are also our concerns, but uh, of course I don't agree with the condemnation. Actually, we would have expected encouragement from our uh, allies, our NATO allies. Uh, I think it's uh, due to a lack of uh, a complete grasp of the situation, but I am uh, confident that uh, her, her concerns will be alleviated after uh, the operation is over. Can you understand her concerns and maybe the concerns from other allies as they relate to the possibility of instability in the region and more so the possibility of ISIS and the mm. fight against ISIS uh, being for nothing, ISIS returning and the fight being for nothing? Of course. Uh, well, this is exactly as I said, our concern too, uh, keeping ISIS in the box it is, uh, where it is. Uh, and uh, not uh, leading to any instability or uh, leaving uh, any vacuum. Uh, we are uh, only and solely after a terrorist organization, so uh, we don't believe it will uh, create any vacuum or uh, lead to any instability, but quite the contrary, that it will contribute to stability. How can you make that argument when the Kurds that, that, you are, uh, that you are advancing against are the ones who are right now tasked with controlling the prisons in which these ISIS fighters remain? Well, uh, that's uh, relatively easy. We can uh, ensure that they, uh, the Daesh uh, militants remain where they are. Uh, we have a solid track record on this uh, because we carried out two operations before. In each operation, we managed to control 2,000 square kilometers within Syria. Uh, we took our time. We were very meticulous in avoiding any civilian casualties. And if you uh, look at the pictures of the towns we uh, captured in these operations, there is no destruction at all. And the civilian casualties, except for a few unfortunate exceptions, is close to nil. Uh, this is, Close to uh, is not the same as none, though. Uh, well, uh, but it's an operation, and uh, if you compare it with the pictures from other operations, like, say, uh, Raqqa, there is not a, a single house that is not obliterated, uh, very uh, in contrast with our operations. So this track record will prove uh, is in our favor, and we will show the same meticulous approach in this operation too. The Kurds say that uh, this morning, uh, five Islamic State militants, uh, ISIS fighters, broke out of a prison in the northeast Syrian city of Kamishli. I hope I'm not, I, I don't mm -hmm. know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Is that true? Who knows? Maybe they set them free uh, in order to make a, a propaganda coup because they do these things. And uh, let me make it clear. But can you clear. say that for certain? Because, I mean, the, like, what if, what if it's because of Turkish attacks there and they've been set free, which undermines the argument you're making, which is that you'd, you'd be so careful that would never happen? Of course. Uh, but if that is the case, they will return to where they were uh, in due course. Uh, but let me make another point clear. When you say the Kurds, uh, we aren't against the Kurds per se. We are against a terrorist organization which is an offspring of the PKK. Uh, YPG and Daesh. It was founded by the 
uh, brother of Abdullah Öcalan, who is the founder of the PKK and who is in jail in Turkey. I know the concern is about the leadership of there, but there are also many of those uh, Kurds who I know you label under that label, but who did fight alongside the Americans, for example, against ISIS, right? It's a confusing scenario, I think, for a lot of people. Uh, not really, because President Trump finally did the, uh, the right thing and uh, decided to withdraw because, uh, as he said from the beginning, that was a temporary arrangement. Uh, and uh, he, uh, they are fully aware that this is a terrorist organization. That's why the support was very limited. But even if it was temporary, they were allied on a temporary basis. And in that time, those Kurds became the protectors of these prisons where these ISIS fighters currently are you know, inhabiting. So I think the concern is, I mean, the, the, here we are seeing the possibility that five of them have escaped. The concern is that that will happen more of that will happen. ISIS will have a chance to regroup and will come back. And all those efforts that all those nations made, all those allied countries made to fight ISIS will be for nothing. I don't think they can do that with five people. But in any case, Turkey has done the most in fighting Daesh. So uh, just for your information, I'll remind you that uh, we uh, are the ones who uh, started their uh, downfall and pushed them away from our borders in the, that first operation in 2017 in the operation Euphrates Shield. And in that process, we neutralized 4,000 Daesh uh, militants. We also prevented uh, 5,800 uh, foreign terrorist fighters which came to support Daesh. We deported them from our country. We currently have 1,000 uh, Daesh militants in jail in Turkey. Uh, we have a watch list of 56,000 people who are banned from entering our country. We also have a very vigorous program where we are uh, looking out for Daesh militants and which is very effective and our allies uh, are test would test My question, that. I'm not disputing that. My questions are not about that. My questions mm -hmm. are what happens in, in this region specifically. President Trump, for example, has said that, uh, that Turkey will be responsible for those captured ISIS fighters. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, there are a number of Canadian citizens among those. Will, yes. you, um, will you expect the Canadian government to repatriate those? It's up to the Canadian government, but we will fully cooperate. Can you explain what that means? So you're, you, you would not take a position on it. It would be the decision of the Canadian government? Well, if they are in Syria, if they are not under our control, there's not much we can do. But if they want to come through Turkey, we can help them. If, but if, they, if that area does become under Turkey's control is what then I'm Then we'll fully cooperate. And what does fully cooperate mean? Does it mean that Canada would have to initiate that process? Or would Turkey, for example, do anything to, to force that to happen? I would rather ask that to a Canadian author, uh, official. I have it's many times. <laughs> <laughs> but ter so you have no official position on it, just that, you, that your country would cooperate? We are ready that. to cooperate. I mean, uh, whatever they ask us to do, we can cooperate. Does that mean, though, that if you were to uh, assume responsibility for that area and for those fighters, that you would not be, uh, you know the discussion taking place right now is to take back every country, take back your fighters. Would that yes, be the which position? Which we encourage. So you encourage, but it's not, it's not a forceful position of yours, for example. There's nothing well, you would do to make, ensure that happens. Well, that's an international relationship. I mean, if the country who is responsible doesn't want to take these people back, there's not much we can do. But if they come to us and ask for them, then we will hand them over and they'll take them in a controlled manner. Have there been any um, conversations with the, your, for example, Minister Freeland or officials here in Canada about that? She said in her statement, I believe, that she was seeking assurances that, uh, that the treatment of those people would comply with, um, with international law. Of course. Uh, we want to fully, uh, we are very meticulous in upholding uh, humanitarian law, uh, international law, and uh, abiding by it fully as you will read from the letters to the Secretary General of the UN and the Secretary General of NATO, which we sent. This is our commitment. And uh, we are very meticulous uh, not to lead to any civilian casualties. Uh, of course... Though uh, there have been some. Uh, well, yes, it's an operation. Uh, today, uh, we were indeed burying a, a child which was killed by a mortar sent by the YPG across our border into Turkey. And this is one of the reasons why we carried out this operation, to prevent such attacks. And we want to repatriate uh, the 4 million uh, Syrian uh, refugees who are in, in our country on a free and voluntary basis and kickstart their economy. Have you had conversations, though, with Canadian officials? Have they been in touch with you about any of this? Uh, well, we made it clear that it is our position that we are ready and willing to cooperate in any way we can if they ask for it. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Ambassador. Pleasure, Pleasure. to have you here. Thanks for coming in. Thank you.
There are reports today that five ISIS fighters escaped from a Kurdish-controlled prison in the region. This after allies expressed concerns that Turkey's operation could undermine global efforts to defeat ISIS. But according to Ambassador Karim Oras, as you just heard, Turkey's purpose there is to eradicate terrorists. In fact, President Erdogan says that as well. And their offensive, they say, will actually help stabilize the region. Besma Mamani is an analyst on Middle East politics and a senior fellow at the Center for International Governance, Innovation, rather, in Waterloo. She joins us now via Skype. Leah West is a lecturer of national security and intelligence at Carleton University's Norman Patterson School of International Affairs and is a former Department of Justice national security lawyer. She joins me in studio. Hello to both of you. Hi. Thanks for doing this. I really appreciate it. I do want to get into some of the uh, claims that the ambassador made, but first, Leah, you were actually in Syria yes. uh, recently. You just got back last yes. Sunday. Uh, what can you tell me about the region that this is happening in and what you saw? So until um, the offensive started, I would have described the region as one that was rebuilding, one that was really optimistic about the future. Um, people were going back to work, back to school. There was so much construction going on in the region. Um, and people, we were having conversations with, you know, what will Rojava look like in 20 years? Um, we were talking to people about recycling programs, um, really kind of looking towards the future. And um, this was, from my perspective, after having talked to people who live in this region, entirely unexpected. And so people who were optimistic about their future after five years of civil war um, have now found themselves facing again a, a war that's looking for their, you know, relative annihilation. Uh, uh, Professor Mamani, let me get you to uh, fact check what uh, we heard from the ambassador around the justification that, they're ma that Turkey is making for what Leah is describing. The idea that the purpose is to root out terrorism. Yeah, well, look, I mean, in, in Turkey's eyes, uh, all of the, the forces in the north call them the Syrian Democratic Forces, the PYG. I mean, there are so many acronyms, but they really do all relate back to the PKK, which is a terrorist organization deemed such in, in Turkey and beyond. Uh, that said, uh, you know, I, look, I, the reality is civilians are going to pay the price for this. I don't know if it was unexpected. Uh, certainly Erdogan's been talking about this for a very, very long time. Uh, he said many a times this is going to happen. I think many of us who've been watching this come out of Turkey, knowing how, frankly, there's a lot of support for this in Turkey, even amongst much of Erdogan's, um, you know, opposition are very much in favor of this. So it frankly was going to happen. It was going to be a matter of time. Uh, but I'm very sad for the civilians who are going to be caught in yet another uh, crossfire, frankly. The counter to some of what the ambassador said, of course, and the questions I, I put to him, uh, Leah, were around whether or not um, this is such a, you know, how, how destabilizing this might be yeah. in the region, particularly because of the number of ISIS fighters uh, in prison or in jail or, or detained in the mm -hmm. area uh, governed by the Kurdish, Kurdish people in that area. How destabilizing do you imagine it might be? Well, so far, I mean, it's hard. The reporting is sporadic, but the, current, uh, the Kurdish Red Cross is reporting 191,000 displaced persons. So it's very destabilizing. Um, not to mention that it de it's destabilizing for the forces who are responsible for guarding ISIS members, guarding the camps where there are, while they might not be hardline fighters, there are there's still strong support for ISIS in these camps. Um, and those individuals are emboldened with, with inside the camp. Um, people with inside the prison are emboldened, may take opportunities, risks that they wouldn't have otherwise. Um, opportunities arising from um, shelling in the region and commercially around a prison um, presumably led to this breakout. Um, and also we've seen a resurgence of actual ISIS attacks in the region south of where this is going on. But in, in Raqqa, we, we saw um, attacks against SDF forces by ISIS. So they're also emboldened by what's going on. So it's not just what's happening in that direct region. It is emboldening ISIS throughout the region and it provides, you know, um, a narrative for ISIS to kind of recall its membership in the region to kind of regroup and take advantage of the situation on the ground. What do you think the end game is for Turkey here, Professor Mamani? 
quite simply, they want to prevent a Kurdish state in the north. Um, and they are very much afraid of that because it doesn't take very much, as you can tell and or imagine, uh, from the fact that much of the Kurdish uh, 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 militia groups that I'm mentioning are connected back to the PKK, that eventually they would sort of join with south part of Turkey. So they're very much afraid that a state-led for the Kurdish people in the north part of Syria will end up meaning that there's going to be a connection to the south of Turkey. So they're trying to prevent that. Uh, but again, the, the civilians are going to pay the ultimate price of this. And I think the challenge here is, frankly, the international community has just kind of taken their, you know, wants to take their hands out of this. They're, they're fatigued from Syria. They don't want to talk about refugees anymore. They don't want to talk about ISIS. They want to sort of be able to say mission accomplished, but it's not mission accomplished. There's still, ton, you know, millions of refugees that are both internally displaced and externally displaced. ISIS is certainly still a threat. And indeed, they still have sympathizers, sympathizers in the area, including many Western citizens in those camps that are should be repatriated at this point, which is really hard for any Western government to, to fathom or to swallow. But, but it's frankly a reality that needs to be addressed. I want to talk about that repatriation, Leo. We've talked about it many times on the show. It takes on a bit of a different context when you're thinking about the idea that, and President Trump has explicitly said, he expects Turkey, uh, you know, through the incursion to take responsibility mm -hmm. for those fighters in those camps who are detained. Some of them are Canadian citizens. Yes. And that's why I asked the Turkish ambassador if there will be any sort of, uh, you know, if they will be expecting the Canadian government to repatriate them. He was very careful with his words and he mm -hmm. didn't seem to indicate at all that that expectation was there, but rather if the desire was there that Turkey would cooperate fully. How did you read that? Um, I, like you did, it was very, very careful. Um, and I think it's too soon to tell exactly what's going to happen with all of these individuals. Al Hol camp is not in the security zone. Um, that's where 70,000 um, individuals are and where the majority of the Canadians are being held, actually. Um, almost uh, the largest percentage of Canadians are on Al Hol camp and they're the largest percentage of them are children and women that are there. So I don't see Turkey actually having to take responsibility for those individuals. Um, so what happens to them? I mean, what are, yeah. the, what are the possibilities? So, I, I mean, best case scenario, the Kurds maintain security over the camp. Worst case scenario, uh, the Kurds are unable to continue to secure the camp. And I can't imagine what's going to happen then. I would like to think that the international community would step up and assist. But um, the clash uh, between, uh, you know, a NATO country and Syria in that region could make things even more difficult. Um, but I don't think there's any real good answers anymore. Canada had an opportunity. There was a window when we could have repatriated our citizens. The entire West had an opportunity. And but Besma's right. Like, we did know that this was going to happen eventually. Um, at least the international community, people watching knew that this could happen. And we sat idly by and did nothing and allowed our, and essentially abandoned our citizens there. The, I have a quick final word to you, Professor Mamani. The, the government ha has been asked about this question many times. Uh, actually, Liberal leader Justin Trudeau was asked even today about those uh, foreign fighters. And the, the line is very, um, very strict. You know, it's the idea that if these people left to go fight with ISIS, well then, sorry, they're on their own. Obviously, it's a complicated matter because there are kids who are who are born to some of these people. But uh, but you know, there's a reason that they're saying what they're saying. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Nobody wants to touch this. This is just so toxic and understandably so. I mean, this is layered with so much uh, animosity, our own animosity to ISIS and not wanting these people to come back. I mean, they end up sowing potentially the seeds for trouble in this country. And of course, people are afraid. But I always say better to have them under our watch, know that they've come here than the consequences of, frankly, the SDF forces not being able to control the prison break, and then eventually they find their way here. I mean, that is far worse for us. Uh, and I don't think that's what we want. We want it to be controlled and monitored. And I think under our watch is far better than I think the dams being broken loose. Okay, I have to leave it there. Thank you very much to both of you. Really appreciate your insights this evening. Thanks to Besma Momani and Leah West. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.